Having a beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Ebu Kaobuchi, and thanks a lot for joining us. Um, we're going to be talking a lot of politics today, uh, starting off with that. Um, I know the scenes have been very quiet because um, INEC put a, a date for commencement of campaigns, and uh, we finally hit the day, which is today. So I guess things are going to get very noisy from now until about maybe May 29th. Uh, but I, hopefully it stops around for very much which means there won't be any drama with the elections, um, hopefully. Um, so campaigns are going to be starting off uh, today. By no, um, a couple of the candidates are officially kicking off tomorrow, pulling out their plans and manifestos for, for voters. And this is across board. Um, I think for the, for the states, as, I think for the states, about two weeks away before they can kick off their own campaign. But federal elections are starting today. So we're going to be talking about campaigns, especially campaign finance, because um, corruption has always been a key factor with regards to our elections, especially the promising part. We don't know if the execution is always the same. Um, but campaign finance has a lot to do with that. We're going to revel how that ties into corruption and what we should be looking out for in the 2019 elections. I have you with me, Aziz Quadri. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, campaigns are finally here. Yes. Um, a lot of us have been itching because, I mean, primaries held quite early. It's earlier than normal. Usually primaries usually hold around December, mm -hmm. and a month later, elections are there. So this is like a longer season, but then it happened, and then we had this law in time, and we're finally here. Um, I wish you be excited. Um, I know campaigns tend to come with a lot of promises, but from what you're seeing so far, or from maybe, I don't know if you've heard anything on the ground, what should we be excited about, if at all? Um, I think what one of the things we can be excited about, um, for especially the presidential elections today, is the third fourth. Um, as people have called it, you know, you know, we know the big players in the game. We know who, you know, we know the incumbent is running. We know that article is running under PDP. But the the, the technocratic class that have come into play um, that want to take the seat of the president because they are they're not your natural politicians. They're not your average politicians, and a lot of them have experience. Um, in government um, and outside of government as well, and a lot of them are results driven. So um, that one of the things I'm excited about is how far they can actually go, um, whether or not they can find a common ground and actually come together. Um, because as you know, everybody knows that this is not a fight. Oh, I, I think everybody knows that this is not a fight that they can win alone. So whether they have um, Nigeria's real best interest at heart to the point where they can actually come together and wage a, you know, a big enough fight against the, 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 the current course. political flock. I mean, they tried that with, uh, <laughs> with what was it called? They, they had that Presidential where, aspirants coming together. Yeah, pact. Where, the pact, yeah, yeah. Where, where they elected uh, Fela Drutui, I believe, and it, it didn't particularly go well. In fact, the umpire on the day then, obviously, is now, is now even running. in the race. Exactly. So it makes it even more interesting. So I don't know that that may happen. I think the issue with that was that it was too soon. I think, um, one, a lot of them were not candidates at that point. They were still aspirants within their various parties. Yeah. But I think it was too soon because they all need to run their race to a certain point until reality sort of hits. Yeah. And then they say to each other, do you know what? I can't, realistically, can I win this? Yeah. No. What can I do to... Um, what can I do to help the country? I can back somebody else. I can back somebody with the same sort of values, the same sort of ideals, somebody that I know that if he or she won, they would actually go there and do the work required. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it, it was too early at that specific yeah. time. The, the third force, quote unquote, is actually is definitely very, very interesting to watch and looking at that space to see how they hopefully can come together. Um, but we can't ignore the two main ones, of course, of who course, everybody yeah. talks about. And people are saying for the first time, as much as these are two very different candidates, for the first time, the things that seem to matter sometimes in politics, which is religion, tribe, they are from the same place. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the House of Fulani, they are both northerners, they are both Muslims. So there isn't going to be that much mudslinging, or will there? Um, I, I still think there will be a lot of mudslinging, and I think um, it will be on it will be on Buhari's part because he's the one currently running the country, and it's so the heat all, is on him. So the heat is on him. It's always easy to find fault in a leader when you want to be a leader. It's all uh, you know. You you can look at the current government of the day, and you can say 
this is what they've done. Nigeria's, you know, become the poverty capital of the world under their watch. Nigerians have become more insecure under their watch. Um, out of school children has increased under their watch. Electricity hasn't particularly improved under their watch. So there's so much you can come out and say that this government has done bad. But the, the, but the, the, op the opposition candidate has also been in government. Exactly. For eight years. Exactly. So um, on his side, he can then cut. You know, it, it's. I think there will be a lot more mudslinging than we think. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they're both from a specific region of the country won't won't entirely matter. Yeah. Well, if the mudslinging is not personality, is not based on religion and tribe, I mean, it's more personality and sort of achievement. Achievements, based, I guess yeah. that's that's not too bad. But I think something else that that's very interesting for a lot of people is people believe that okay, also for the first time we might have an even match financially. You know, we have a, 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 a an in, the incumbent so always has, funds, you mean? yeah. The, okay. the incumbent always has sort of quote unquote funds available to them. I mean, we're not saying the president's going to use state funds to mm. vote, but I mean, they always get donations because they are the incumbent. People yeah. want to curry favors. We also have an opposition party, uh, the main opposition now, the PDP, with the candidates who people have claimed is a billionaire, successful businessman, has funds at his disposal and has a lot of friends who would also donate yeah, to his campaign. Yeah. So we're talking about campaign finance now, which also brings us sort of to the third force as well. Is that going to matter much? Because we've heard about vote buying a lot these days from the smaller elections that have happened in the states and the, the legislatures as well. Vote buying might be a factor, we don't know. But how much of a factor will campaign finance play in who wins this? I think it's, it's going to matter a lot. Um, it's going to matter... Because, like you said, um, we've got the two big candidates who ultimately have unlimited funds. And um, because it's not as easy as it was 16 years ago to go and steal a, a ballot box and go and stuff a ballot box, the, the new generation form of rigging is vote buying. Um, I think the third force, they're going to, because of what they stand for, it's going to be hard for them to, you know, play at that level playing field. Um, I mean, we saw what happened in Ekiti, we saw what happened in Oshun, and we can see that trend of what may, ha what may happen come February 2019, um, where people or where people will receive X amount of money to vote for X amount of, or to vote for a specific person. Yeah. Um, and I think Nigerians really have to wake up and fight against that. They have yeah. to, I think the only way around that is political education. They have to understand that whatever amount of money that they are collecting from whoever, it is only there to serve the purpose of now. It doesn't help you in the future. It doesn't help your child get a job within the next four years. It doesn't secure your lives better within our country. It doesn't, um, it doesn't put you in a position where you can ultimately say you want to go out and be proud of your country. It's only to fill your stomach now. Yeah. And by the time you're done with, or by the time you're done spending whatever they give you, what's left?